So in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can get started using the Babel compiler for JavaScript. So in case you're not familiar, what Babel does is it takes cutting edge JavaScript with the new features in, with the new syntax, and converts it into old JavaScript. Now, you might be wondering, why would you want to do that? And it's all about browser compatibility. So there's basically two reasons why trying to run new and shiny JavaScript features in a user's browser might not work. The first one is that a browser producer may not have updated the browser yet to support the new features and syntax. And the second one is that a user may not have updated their browser so they can get that support that is available. Now, if you personally wanted to make sure that the JavaScript you write is compatible with all users' browsers, you'd have to write a lot more code and you wouldn't be able to take advantage of any new JavaScript features. So the beauty of Babel is that it does that for you. So you can write new JavaScript and Babel will convert it to older, more browser-friendly code. So one way you can get started using Babel is live online on the official Babel website. So if you head to babeljs.io, click on try it out, this allows you to start using Babel here. So the way that this works is on the left-hand side, you input your JavaScript code with the latest features, and on the right-hand side, older, more browser-compatible JavaScript is output. And on the left-hand side, you can see there's a lot of settings for the conversion that I can play around with. One of these that's really important is the targets. So at the moment, I'm using the default settings, and I'm saying that I don't want to take into account Internet Explorer 11, or Internet Explorer 11 for mobile. So let's test this as it is. For testing, I've prepared some code. So it's using some modern features. It's an asynchronous function using async await syntax. So this is quite new. Let's see how Barbell converts this with our current settings. So you can see that not much has changed and that's because most modern browsers will now support this syntax. But what if I want to make this code also compatible with Internet Explorer 11. So I'm going to delete the exceptions for Internet Explorer 11 and for mobile now and keep defaults. Now you can see that the code on the right hand side is considerably longer and it's not using any of the new features that I'm using on the left hand side. To do this personally would be a nightmare. I'd have to use old JavaScript. I couldn't use any of the new features and I'd have to write 48 lines of code. That's the beauty of Babel that it's going to do all of the heavy lifting for you is going to make this conversion and you can continue to take advantage of cutting edge JavaScript features that improve the efficiency of your code. Now using Babel online is fine for demonstration purposes and small projects, but if you're doing a lot of coding, then this is going to get very tiresome very quickly, copying and pasting code to this page and then copying and pasting it back in your document. So a more efficient way to incorporate Babel into your project is to install it locally so then you will be able to make this conversion by entering a single command in your terminal. So that's what I'll show you how to do now. And we'll be installing Babel from the terminal using the Node Package Manager. So the first thing you want to do is open the terminal. I'm using Windows PowerShell. Now to install Babel using the Node Package Manager, you need to have Node installed on your system. So if you're not sure, you can check if that's the case by typing Node followed by the V flag, and that will return the version of Node that you have installed on your system if indeed Node is installed. Otherwise, you need to head to the Node.js website and install Node before continuing with the steps in this tutorial. So I have the page that you would need to go to open in another window. It's nodejs.org. Node.js is completely free to install. All you need to do is select the version that's appropriate for your system follow the download instructions, and then you'll be able to start using Node from the terminal. So if you're new to Node, I would definitely recommend installing the long-term stable version over the current version because it's less likely to contain bugs. So assuming that you've installed Node, the next step is to create a project folder somewhere on your system. I've created a new one on my desktop here called MyJS Project. So I want to access this new project folder in the terminal. So the way that I do that is set the current directory to the path to the folder and a shortcut for typing that out is to just simply drag and drop the folder into the terminal. That will give me the path to it. Now, when I hit return, I'm now in the project folder. 
Now, the first thing I want to do is set up a new node project. So the way that I do that is I type npm init and to accept all of the defaults for a new node project, I can use the yes parameter. Now, when I press return, this is going to set up a new node project in the folder. So if I open the project folder now, so you see that a new file has been created here, package.json. If I open that, you can see that package.json already contains some data about my project. The next thing I want to do is install Babel into this project. So I can do that from the command line using npm. We're still in the project folder. So to install Babel with npm, I write npm install. So I'm going to specify that I want to save it as a development dependency in the project. Next, I need to specify that I want to install Babel. So the first thing I want to do is install the Babel core. I also want to install the Babel CLI, the command line interface. This will allow me to run Babel commands from the command line. Finally, I want to install the Babel preset environment that's going to give me some presets for making conversions that will be useful in a moment. So when I hit return, this is going to install the packages necessary to start using Babel. And it's also going to modify package.json. So all three of these packages that we're going to install are going to be listed in package.json as development dependencies of this project. And that's because we specified here that we want to save them in this project as development dependencies. So that is good practice so that your project can be replicated on another system that may not have these packages installed globally. So let's install the packages now. Now, after the installation, head back to package.json and you should see that the three packages you've installed are now listed as dependencies of the project, including the version number that you have installed so that your project can be precisely replicated on another system. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to create a kind of a shortcut so I can run the Babel compiler each time from the command line. So the first thing I need to specify is that when I call the build script, I want to run Babel. The next thing I need to specify is a source folder where the original JavaScript I want to be converted is going to be stored. Now this can contain multiple JavaScript files. So I'm going to create a folder for that in a moment called SRC. The final thing I need to specify after a D flag is the output folder where the converted files are going to be output to. Now I'm going to say that they should be saved to a folder called resources. Now I don't actually need to create the resources folder because Babel is going to do that for me when it runs. But I do still need to create the SRC folder and put some JavaScript in there so it can be converted. So I'm going to save this package.json file close it and just import the entire folder into my VSC workspace. So now that I have the entire contents of the project folder available to me, I'm going to create the SRC directory. And inside there, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. Now, it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as it's a JavaScript file, then Babel is going to recognize it and convert it. So I'm going to call that script.js. And then inside script.js, I need some JavaScript. So I'm going to use the same snippet of code that I used when I was using Babel online earlier. Okay, so I'm going to save that file. So now everything should be in place and we can start running Babel from the command line. So back in the terminal, make sure you are in your new project folder and type npm run build. And this is going to run the script that we specified in package.json that runs Babel. So I'm running it now. It's letting me know that it successfully compiled one file with Babel. So if I look at my folders now, you see there's a resources folder that's been created and inside here, a file called script.js, which mirrors the name of the original file. Now you might be a little bit disappointed by the results here. The output looks almost identical to the original file. And the reason is that we haven't actually specified that Babel should do anything in particular when it compiles. What we still need to do is tell Babel how we want to make this conversion. So to do that, you need to create a new file in the root directory of your project folder. And that should be called babel.config.json. 
So you can see the Barbell logo there. VS Code recognizes that this is the Barbell config and Barbell itself will look to see if this file exists when it compiles JavaScript. So what you do here is specify the settings for the conversion. So to do so, you create a new JSON data object. So because I downloaded the presets package, I can simply adopt those. So the way that I do that is I create a new key called presets. It's JSON, so the key has to be a string. And then I enter the presets as an array. Now, all I need to do is enter here that I want to use Babel forward slash preset EMV. So this is going to make a conversion using default settings. For this tutorial, I just want to keep things simple by using the default settings. But if you do want to play around with the conversion settings, the Barbell website lists all of the options that you can use. So let's try making the conversion now with these presets. So I'm going to save this and then let's run Barbell again from the terminal. So once again, back in the terminal, I want to run the build script in package.json. I can do that by calling npm run build and that should make the conversion now so let's check the output folder now and see what's there so inside resources script.js so you can see that conversion was definitely made this time my code is a lot longer and it's avoiding the use of the async function and you can't see the await keyword anywhere either so this javascript code here is more cross-browser friendly and backwards compatible than the file that i'm working in but I didn't have to write it myself. I can just run npm run build and it's going to make the conversion for me, allowing me to focus on writing my script using whatever new features that I like. So now in your web project, what you need to do is make sure that the HTML file that's linking to the script. So I'm just going to create a boilerplate HTML file here. So you want to make sure that it's linking to the Barbell output file and not the original script. So in this case, I would link to the folder resources and inside there, the script.js file. Now, when you open your web project, the browser is going to be reading the browser friendly version of your script. Meanwhile, you can continue working on your project in the original script.js file using modern JavaScript features and you can let Barbell take care of converting it to a browser friendly version of your script. So that is it for this introductory tutorial on using Barbel. If you did find this tutorial useful, please consider clicking the like button below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.